That's pretty yeah. tight. Uh, yeah, I actually really like because if the they go killer. any closer, they go. If they go any closer, they're gonna end up rounding that turn way too wide. And if they go any farther out, you've taken the slow way around the turn. <laughs> what is going on, guys? It is JJ here, back with yet another video. And today we are going to take a look. This time, not at a F1 Explained video. Uh, I take that back entirely. The first video that we took a look at was from was it Donut Media? <laughs> The presenter in that, absolutely amazing, world, world class entertainment, nonetheless. We took a look at that video just to sort of dip our toe in, especially because it was more, I feel like, of a historical video and not really explaining F1. They did go step by step, essentially explaining the car history, but instead we're going to take a look today at F1 drivers explaining the sport and maybe more so what happens uh, in a weekend of F1 because obviously I know the sort of history of the cars, the history of the championships, but I don't know which we're going to get into this bit by bit. I guess it's going to take us days, weeks, maybe not a full year or anything like that. But it's going to take us a while to, to catch up on our F1 history, whether it's certain races, whether it's certain events, whether it's certain championships, title wins, etc. Uh, the GOAT conversation, like who is the Michael Jordan or, or who's the Le LeBron James or, or who's the Messi of, of F1. We gotta figure that out, and we gotta we gotta decide that for ourselves. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Obviously, there will be some recency bias with some of the stuff with me getting into the sport um, late. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and what are the videos you guys want to see? Um, I am watching at the recommendation of others on the F1 videos, Top Gear, um, which I feel like I've seen something like I've seen stuff about it, but I've never watched. Watch, I feel like I've seen a special or two. I've seen a special or two of Top Gear. Maybe just like we're sitting in a waiting room or like watching it with like a family or something like that. Nothing like in depth where I've seen it for years and years. So we're gonna take a look at that as well. Uh, I think it's the British car one of Top Gear. You're just gonna have to go find another channel. Go check it out. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the video of F1 drivers explaining F1. As well guys, you can find the original video just down in the description below. F1 drivers explain to me some F1. Let's make, sure, let's make sure we get the HD one. And this is obviously, this is a video, I believe, on the F1 website. So, so yeah, they're gonna get all the copyright. So why is a weekend of three days? Mainly because in Formula One, it's a bit of a classic to have three days. Uh, we use Friday as a free practice day. So three days we have on the race weekend, we just have three hours of practice on the Friday. Generally, when you get to a track, you just need time to, to learn about the car, what the, about the track, about the conditions. We divide the weekend into three parts. Here we would practice, here we would qualify, here we would race. We use this day to learn everything we can about Wait. the... Although now only free practice sessions at home Fridays are important for teams to deliver a lot of testing. Because they test the cars, like on the turns, like ability, like I, the, the engineering the and ingenuity of these are, is, is amazing. Finding the changes you made in practice in the morning, yeah, qualifying for position to where you start from the race. We use this day to exploit the maximum we can out of our machines to qualify as best possible for race day that is the important day. You can definitely do it all in one day. Um, there's not enough time or energy. Practice is very important to prepare qualifying, but also F1 points are awarded by the position, obviously. And if you win okay, a race, so you get 25 to... points to the winner, 18 to second, 15, 12, 10. And so essentially, if there are multiple drivers in like those top positions for the same team, the team gets all of those points. 25 points. The biggest gap between the points is um, in the higher positions. So from okay. second to third, That's pretty tight. Um, it's, it's quite a big gap as well. But then it gets this closer, is the stuff that and if you finish the 10, video. you get one point. So F1 points are awarded for the cars that finish in the top 10 positions. So starting with first place, down to 10th, you get 25 points, then 18, 15, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, and 1. And we also have a point for the fastest lap of the race. Valtteri Bottas is going for the fastest lap. To gain that, sometimes you might need to compromise your strategy to put fresh tires at the end of the race when you have less fuel in the car, when the car is lighter. So you might try and go for it, but there's always a bit of risk doing that. Winner gets 25, probably. Uh, second... Imagine you have the fastest 18, lap, but you finish 15, dead last. Um, and from there, 
tent get one and everybody can come. Sectors on the track are made for us to basically cut the track in a few sections so it's clearer to us where we are losing time or where we are gaining time. Most of the tracks have three sectors in Formula One. If we draw Barcelona very quickly here, it goes like that, like that. It's very poor, eh? but uh, basically you divide it into three. You have the first chicane um, and, and turn three. You have the second sector and then you have the third sector first sector, basically we call it the, the fast sector because you have the whole long straight and a very fast corner that is flat out. The second sector becomes a bit uh, twistier like and medium speed corners and this the third really sector is actually pretty slow. So it's just easier for everyone to say, okay, he has something happening in sector one or he has something happening in other sectors. Okay. And it helps the team okay. basically to divide the performance of their own car to, to learn in which type of corner you can, you can improve. Why are you laughing, man? I look like, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> an apex is... How do you Ape okay, it? No, it's I funny, it. as a driver, you just do things that don't really... But okay, so let's use this one. Uh, so the apex is the point of the corner where you want to like close the corner to then give you the best trajectory to exit. That's pretty yeah. tiny. Uh, yeah, actually an apex really like, is the Because if they go any closer, they go, if they go any closer, they're gonna end up rounding that turn way too wide. And if they go any farther out, you've taken the slow way around the turn. They reach That's in the tiny. middle of the corner, which is most See, of the time drive. at the apex. Yeah, the apex I'm like around the curb. Um, that, that is so it. yeah, middle of the corner, basically Can't there. This fast? No. And there. An apex. I'm going to draw you here on this lovely whiteboard. So we've got the racing car here, and I'll draw the racing line, which is from the outside of the track, hitting the inside of the corner before running wide to the exit of the corner again. The apex is the most central and the slowest part of the corner, but you never know where the grip is. Sometimes it could be more like this. This could be late apex. So they would cut Early corner. apex. You want to come out little bit higher up top to then flow through apex somewhere here and then come out like that and that'll give you a, a trajectory where you can come late into the corner and kind of slingshot out so that is what we call an apex the point where we kind of close the corner and the apex is described at the point of which you hit the inside of the track so we often I love how precise they all are actually in explaining it too. Yeah, I think you know, that's pretty the apex sick. around the corner and most, most of the times the more apexes you hit, the better it is. There could be many different angles of doing this corner depending on uh, your car setup and uh, wind direction and, and so on. I just learned something myself actually. Or confused myself even more, I don't know. Understeer and the steer is when you turn and the um, car doesn't turn basically. Uh, to the front tire oh. side. It's when you're, you know, you're turning and the car stop, the, the rear of the car often pushes the car forwards, and um, it's just not the, the car's not rotating at, at the rate in which you're putting the angle in. Generally, drivers don't like understeer. I think, in a general thing, I think road cars that you drive will have a lot of understeer because it's very safe. Um, but a quick car generally is oversteery, so you need the car to be reactive. Um, because that way you can carry the most speed through a corner. Understeer and oversteer, the two most famous words. In Are they the showing his speed. car as an example? Uh, understeer is when the car uh, is not responding to the amount of steering lock. That's so oversteer, isn't it? What that he just you are, did. Um, that you are winding on. Um, it's when the car... Yeah, from the car doesn't want to turn the corner. Kind of, you're demanding more steering lock for the no, amount of No, it's understeer? Oh, Jesus, understeer I'm so is when you turn the steering wheel into a corner and the front of the car is sliding so the car is, is going straight more than you want to and uh, oversteer is the opposite is that when you turn the steering wheel the rear end slides and the car turns more than, than you so oversteer is probably the more dangerous of the two of them because it means you're losing control and it's doing a nice little flip requires opposite lock to correct when drivers turn the front wheels of the skid I feel like I'm watching a driving manual. I feel like I'm watching an actual driving manual right now and it's blowing my mind. I wanted to. If you ever watched Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, 
that is oversteer. Um, so the front, I don't let's know say, who if the trajectory this. of the car is doing this, let's say we kind of that's kind of what I mean. The front and rear wheels uh, following the line. The rear wheels would go, let's say, past. So what you're telling me is need for speed drift angle, cannot happen in line, Formula One cars. And uh, tends to be that the rear is losing grip. So uh, when we complain about oversteer, we'll generally mean that the rear is moving too much um, and it's moving out of line. So uh, yeah, the yeah, wheels are just locked. Spins Dude, those back we get wheels are locked. Oversteer and we, uh, we do this. Do they, do they have multiple of like the same vehicle on site, like in case they get like crash it in the practice lap, or is it just you repair it the best you can for the lap, or like for the race? My crashes. The oversteer. Because that, be yeah, with that crash, that they the just corner, use an example for the axles. Too snapped. fast, perhaps, and oh no, you maybe have this kind of moment when you when the rear slides and you have to make a correction because the rear if you don't make a correction then you're going to then you're going to spin an oversteer is when you turn and it turns too much and usually overpowers the rear so the rear steps out and you have to correct yeah, i have a funny has story. anyone ever tried to go um, backwards there was a japanese like guy win backwards um, for like race against you think? Three. and i convinced him he didn't know many much english so i convinced him convinced him that oversteer was understeer and understeer was oversteer so for the first test, he was complaining about oversteer, but he meant understeer, and it was understeer. Yeah. Anyway, I thought that was quite a funny joke, but apparently it wasn't that funny. This is some tires lock up, isn't you it? Basically, break break too hard, tires, yeah. and you exceed the amount of grip available, so the tire basically stops and locks. That's going like, to be terrifying. And you kind of uh, get smoke because of the rubber and the friction, I guess, on the tarmac. So it, it's basically when you brake too hard. Formula One uh, lockup is uh, something that you see quite a lot on TV. Because you've got braking turns and one of the tires is not going. You're screwed. It means that you're always trying to keep both axles and the maximum deceleration, trying to slow the car as much as possible. But normally when you lock up, it's because you've applied too much brake pressure for the grip available and the tire just stops. So lock up. Uh, I mean, if anything, that means your brakes are working better than they should. You're stopping the tire flat like that. Brake, because we don't have uh, an anti-locking brake system like you do on your also, car. Also, they're spelling so tire, T-Y-R-E. Oh my goodness. Demonstration here. Oh my goodness. The wheel's turning as you're going down the straight, and when you brake, as opposed to it kind of decelerating while it's still turning, it kind of stops it's turning, nice and you visual. just pretty much go straight like that, and you basically can flat spot the part of the tire where it's For anybody working. watching this and is actually enjoying me learning or watching F1 drivers explaining this, I am I applaud you because I feel like me getting to actually see them explain this, while it is extremely entertaining, and they are very trying to keep this very entertaining, a lot of this feels like a driver's end course, like something I would fall asleep to myself. It's enjoyable, don't get me wrong, but I feel like I'd rather watch the actual racing and learn it as I go. They tried. They, they did try their very best here. It could create quite a big vibration like, in your drive. I know where a lock-up is. You do a lock-up and the tire is not going to anymore. I want to, like, you, off you talk about the point system. of tire. That's it. Because it's been rubbing against the asphalt. Once you have one lock-up, then every time you start braking, it's very, it's very easy to hit this part of the tire and keep locking it up. So you start taking even more part of the tire. And then the next time you brake, it's easier to lock up again because Dude, the tire uh, is more uh, squared. Right, and you end up with a, with a tire that is nearly squared and you need to pit because you have very little grip, a lot of vibrations, and it's nearly undrivable. If you lock up for too long, they are still talking about lockups. The rubber on that point starts to get chewed up and you get oh my goodness. what we call a flat spot so end this video? after a lockup. Post race or post qualifying, uh, the scrutineers um, and the officials check the cars. Our team can touch the car, can touch any special parts of the cars to be checked like it is. The car cannot be touched by what? any member of the team or any, any fan. To make sure. Best-stop area into which cars are driven after qualifying in the race where no team members are allowed. Why? Sure that there's 
my teachers, basically. Yeah, well, is it that, more or less, yeah? Okay. What? Is that like to investigate? I know when we watched the F1 Explained video, they talked about like the wooden board underneath and so they like investigate the cars and stuff like that, but that's, I feel like that's sort of maybe like a tough, I don't even know. I, 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 they're doing it because they have to, okay. That is it, that's the F1 Drivers Explained video. Um, let me know what you guys think about that. Maybe the drivers didn't actually get... I feel like I still don't know enough about the sport watching these. Happy to see the drivers. So let me know which one of the drivers is your guys' favorite. People keep asking me to watch Mac, Max Verstappen. Verstappen... Something. I'm not sure I really saw him there. Or if I did, I did not recognize him. So let me know who it was down in the comments below. Let me know who you guys want to see. And we'll definitely get to them on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching though. And peace.